Hello everyone, welcome back to All The Mods 8. In the last episode, we did a few things to do with our refined storage and started looking into the process of making some mystical agriculture farmland. But in this episode, we're definitely going to set this up well and truly. So, before I get started expanding this area out here and making myself the space that I want to work on all of this, there's something very important that I think would be worth making. And that is time in a bottle, this. So I'm gonna put that over there and I can actually remove a few things that I no longer need. I don't need chests, I don't need the infinity range booster. Don't need this power stuff right now either. Yeah, just a few things that are no longer quite necessary. There we go, clean things up a bit. And after talking with some friends, I've been informed that the uh, dimensional storage can be a little bit glitchy and cause problems when connected with refined storage. So instead, we're going to use the ender chests. I, uh, I do know what to do to make them, so we can make those up as much as we like. Just need to make a bunch of ender pouches. So we're going to use these ender chests combined with a few things. But I think while I'm building, it would be nice to start accumulating some time. So we're going to build this. Now, if we go like this, I have uh, the unobtainium and I have the bottle of enchanting. Lapis, yeah, I've got lapis. So that's not a problem. In fact, I'm just going to uh, put all of that away. But we need to make ourselves a few things. Some from mystical agriculture and something from productive bees. Now, the productive bees part is actually pretty easy to make. Just need some honeycomb block. Let's see if I have enough for that. I do. Perfect. There we go. So I have that part. But uh, this speed augment three requires a few things. So we need to go through one, two, and make ourselves an unattuned augment. Now I think we need two, so let's get to work on that. So using this thing here, we need to make ourselves speed augment one, a speed augment two, and a speed augment three. So first and foremost, we need prudentium. And I think I can craft that. So let's have a look. Right, we need to make ourselves an infusion crystal. I might have already had one, but just to be safe, we're gonna do that. And I can quite easily make the four of that that I need. See if I have some sugar, I do. In fact, I actually need to make uh, a few more of these. Crystal, one, two, three, four. If we put that in the middle, place down a few things like this, some sugar in the adjacent ones. I should be able to, yeah, make ourselves a speed augment. Nice. We could do the same thing again. That's such a satisfying pop noise. Okay, I should probably also sleep. So now we have two of the speed one, we need to go up to the next level, which is this uh, tertium. Tertium? Tertium. I think it is tertium. Which means we need another, well actually, if we're going to need four of those, each one of those takes four of those. So I need 1632 Prudentium. Okay, I'm beginning to understand. Luckily, we have plenty of the uh, Inferium here. And I am going to do this bit by bit. I'm probably going to need more of this, but that is fine for now. So we take this crystal, we split that like that, and there we go. We're also starting to open up a few things in this mystical agriculture line, which is going to be very handy. And you can see I've actually made the prismarine seeds before, early on when I was trying to work out how to get myself some, uh, some prismarine. Rabbit seeds? I've made rabbit seeds? I must have got them from something once. Okay, cool. So, with uh, this in hand, we can bring our augments up to the next level. Nice. Now I'll put that in there. I just need a little bit more sugar. Okay, so to get to our last layer, we need to make some Imperium. And it's much the same thing. You can get an idea of how this sort of stacks. So if we're gonna need eight of these, we're gonna need 32 tertium, but then each one of the tertium takes uh, four of the prudentium so that's uh two stacks of prudentium which will require four times that 
So we need eight stacks of uh, Inferium Essence, which we do have pretty easily. So if I do that and make two stacks of that, was it? Something along those lines. Ah, I put the thing away. Then we put this in here. That makes 32. And there we go. We have ourselves eight of the Imperium Essence. Now it's things like this that it starts to become very important to learn how to make auto crafting. And that's still a little bit scary to me, but we are going to have to look into it some point soon. Auto crafting would mean that I could just request uh, a certain amount of these items. And as long as I have it set up right, my system will automatically go through that process of putting together the different layers in between that needed to happen and then all that together to make what we need. So oh, I probably need to put this in there. So that is something that we will tackle soon if I can wrap my head around it. So that's one and two. And with this, we'll be able to make time in a bottle. Perfect. So if I put those away, in fact, I can put away a few things and we select this. Ta-da! <laughs> so most people who've played this pack will know, but if you don't know and you're wondering what this is, Time in a Bottle stores the amount of time that you have played for. And what you can do is you can speed up anything that ticks. So in-game ticks 20 per second, there are random ticks that will, uh, at a random point, this will decide to grow. It has a certain amount of chance. Basically, you can speed this up with a multiplier by consuming the time that you have accumulated in the bottle, and that will allow you to uh, speed up the random tick nature. So, for example, you can see this is at growth level 57. If I just speed this up a bit, I probably don't have enough time in a bottle to do so, but you can see it's growing a little bit faster. Oh. I've got enough to do a little bit more. Let's see, 71%. And this will be randomly ticking at four times the speed. It obviously takes about 30 seconds of random tick time to double the multiplier. Let's see if I can get up to 30 seconds again here. Yep, there we go. Oh, it ran out, interesting. So you obviously do have to build up a decent amount of time in there to be able to make this work at a decent pace, but you can go up to 256 times speed, I believe, and really make things grow fast. So we have one, <laughs> we've unlocked uh, our Imperium and Supremium at the end. You can see you can grow diamond, uh, uranite, emeralds, platinum, netherite, and there are even some interesting things in addition to that, but uh, we can grow Enderman stuff, blaze stuff, experience, ghast. Yeah, you can make some pretty impressive farms out of this. And one that we might need to do pretty quick is the uh, is the cow, because I need to make a bunch of these ender pouches. Also, tips and tricks, time in a bottle is probably one of the most useful items in game. It stores time for every second that passes while it is in your inventory, which you can then spend to speed up any block entity almost everything in game. So we're going to take that and what's our random reward is cast here. Pretty useless, but that's okay. Cool. So now we're storing time. You can see I've been waffling away for a few minutes now, and uh, that'll be very helpful in getting ourselves started on a few of these plants. But to waste some time and allow some of that to build up, I am going to build another layer. So we have a few rings here, but I'm thinking that I'm going to make a slightly wider one around the outside that's going to give me space to spread out a bunch of different types of plots or uh, little farmland things that I'm going to use. Hey bud, <laughs> you okay? So I'm gonna spend some time uh, chopping down some trees, flattening out and filling in some areas again like this and uh, giving ourselves another ring and then we'll come back and start working on some mystical agriculture. So, see you in a second. Hopefully with a little bit more time. In fact, we'll be able to see exactly how long this took me. All right. In the end, about 44 minutes. Not too bad. We now have ourselves an extra ring around the outside and I've cleared out some, some extra space, filled in some holes. You can actually see under here <laughs> that I've just... Uh, patched over top of things a little bit, but we now have this extra ring that comes out a little bit further. 
I'm a little disappointed that I didn't do it to the back of that. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. One moment. Much better. <laughs> there we go. This outside circle is a little bit bigger and it matches up with the back of there, giving us a little bit more space. And it only took me uh, an additional seven or so minutes. That's fine. Let's just clear this out too. And now I think I want to make myself wand. Nice. I want to make myself a little bit of a barrier here. There we go. <laughs> I love this thing. So, so convenient. So now we have all of this set up at two times height, which is a little bit nicer. We can personally walk up over top of it, but it does just give a little bit of a barrier for us. Cool. So with the nighttime falling, we can probably sleep away this rain. Although our ship does provide a little bit of cover. Let's get rid of it and let's get into mystical agriculture. So this is grown and we got some dirt essence. Now it doesn't provide the actual dirt itself. It provides this essence, which is then used to create a few different things. One of them is dirt, but it only requires eight of them to make 24. So that's pretty good. Nature essence is interesting. That's obviously something that we can grow as well. Water essence for mud. Ooh, we can craft a lot of stuff. Very interesting. Really nice, actually. Okay. So if we go over to our mystical agriculture here, there is, yes, water essence, air essence, earth essence, and all of that jazz. So this will be very, very handy for uh, crafting ourselves some different things. But... We don't really need that there. We're going to do this a little bit better. Uh, huh. Wait, can I pick this stuff up? Since it is good soil. Yeah, Imperium farmland. Nice. Okay, so we're going to need a couple of basic things. One of them is this ender chest. These ender chests here can be programmed and they also look spectacular. They can be programmed to different colors and I, there's a way to do it like this. Hold on. I'm pretty sure it says it if we go to at ender chests. Uh, maybe it was while it was in my inventory. Not sure, but there is a way to program them to different colors. Let's see. I think maybe you need to dye it. Let's try that. Do we have any dye? We do. Let's grab a lime green. Right. There we go. You can see at the top left now it says code 500. So there's obviously a certain amount of different colors that you can do in here. But if I was to dye another one with just that top line as uh, lime green, then we would have a particular style like this. Now I assume that if I dye it back to white, let's see, uh, bone meal, I think I have one. If I dye this back to white, yeah, it resets it to zero, zero. So that's cool. Right now, it doesn't have that much storage, but we don't necessarily need storage because we're going to be sending it somewhere else. This is more just to connect two points, but you can click it with Ender Pearl, I believe. Maybe shift right click, increase to 12. There we go. Let's have a look. So we've increased that and you can bring it all the way up to a full size chest just in case you wanted to use them as actual storage. So on top of that, we need this older modium hoe. I'm going to actually put that in here because that is indestructible and we can use it with a pylon. Uh, harvester pylon. There we go. So these are all quite interesting. What is this? Don't know what these ones are from. Vitalize nature pylons that had a turner. Okay. Regardless, we are using the at pylon mods. Uh, right click on a player to select them. Not quite sure what those do. Uh, an expulsion pylon expels other players from a configurable chunk range around. Okay. An infusion pylon applies potion effects from an activated uh, potion filter at any distance. Okay. Harvester pylon is what we're going to use. Harvest crops in a configurable radius. And we actually have a ponder on that, which is good. Just place inside or above a water block and an interdiction pylon, configurable mob spawn protection in a radius around the pylon. Good to know. So if we ponder this, let's have a look, see. If we place it in water, 
It needs a hoe in its inventory and its durability will be used, but we can get an unbreakable option. Then above that, we can have a storage device, set it to the radius that we want to harvest, and it will automatically harvest those things into the inventory above. If that inventory happens to be a ender chest, we can link those ender chests to a storage room under here and basically have all of our stuff using these ender chests to send it right into the center and be dealt with that way. So indestructible all the modium ho means that we uh, don't have to worry about it breaking. And if I grab the harvest pylon, what does it cost? Not much, not much at all. Just some blackstone, a little bit of quartz, some iron bars, and all of that good stuff. So, what have I missing? The polished blackstone, I can make up a little bit of. And the quartz slabs, I can only make a couple as well. But this will get us started. There we go, we got four. So, my goal here is to set up a 5x5 five five area with this in the middle. Essentially giving us 24 spaces of cropland. Now, once again, this is heavily inspired by Princess Lissy. I'm essentially copying her farm setup that she has on her streaming world. And uh, I'm going to leave a link in the description to Princess Lissy's stream because she is far further advanced than I am, working towards automating the ATM star and has an incredibly large build that she has taken over one of the, uh, the huge dungeons and turned it into her own base. And it's ridiculously incredible. And basically I went into her stream the other day and said, teach me please. So a lot of this let's play has been inspired by Lissy. And this is one of the things that she was showing me how to do. So we're going to try and copy what she got done. So essentially, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's correct. I probably want to come across to like here. And we're going to do this stuff a little bit above the ground. Now, do I have anything interesting to build with? Let's grab some of this deep slate. See what we can turn that into. Nice. Uh, we're going to grab some stairs. And we're going to grab some of this. That should do. And with these, we're going to set up a interesting little thing over here. So if I get the corners like this, we're going to put some upside down stairs here. Oh, <laughs> wait, <laughs> whoops. Some upside down stairs that are going to be waterlogged and provide us an area to put down our lily pads. Nice. Let's sleep. So we touched on this briefly in the last episode, but the lily pads of fertility from Reliquary, these are going to be the thing that really helps this turn into something quite special. So I have some of this farmland still that we're going to put down. We're going to grab just a little bit of dirt if I have some. There we go. Till it up. And we'll grab some of this essence while also flooding that in the center. From here, we can place this and set this to five by five. And then all we have to do is place this inventory above the pylon, which we have. Pylon is working. Now, anything that is within that five by five is going to get grown. We can take this a step further. And if we waterlog these stairs like so, and I think they should all be waterlogged. If I bring this uh, waterlogged true down in the side there. This is going to allow me to put these lily pads of fertility on top of them. And the lily pads of fertility will increase the tick speed, speeds the growth of crops, and it's a stacking multiplier. So the more you have in an area, the more it's going to add random ticks to the crops. So. Let's see what we can do here. We need green dye. Do we have cactus? Uh, cactus, we have a little bit. Let's head up top and yeah, this was a fail. That's not what I uh, was intending to grow in there. Let's grow some cactus instead. Does that grow on that? It appears to be yes. So I have a hour accumulated here. Let's just do this.
That took me down about 15 minutes, but as you can see, it is growing at a very decent pace. Now, I'm not exactly sure how long that lasts for, but it should at least get me enough to get a few pieces of green dye. There we go. 20. Not too shabby. We'll jump in here, cook that up, and we have 48. So, if we combine these things, we can get... 48 which is enough to get us started and i've been growing these lily pads for a long while now so uh yeah <laughs> we've got plenty of those to go around let's make as many of these as we can 16 not quite enough for one of these setups so we are going to have to do some work but let's let's try something here we're going to start off with these dirt seeds i'm going to put down the two that we have and as we can see, the growth is at zero. I could speed this up with time in a bottle, but instead we're going to put down these things. Let's put down three on each side for now. Now it may not look like much, but you can see the little particles, meaning that the ticks are being increased and upping the chance of this to grow to another layer. So if I increase the amount that we have, like so, we should see a significant amount of change. Now at this scale, with only two, it's not very fast. With 24, it's gonna go a lot faster. And we also only have this at inferior level. If we go over to the mystical agriculture, I do have some at tertium level. Let's, oh, there we go. That just did the thing and it brought in some dirt. Now there is a small chance that uh, we get some extra seeds. And once we do that, we're going to be able to upgrade this even further. Now, can I? Not quite. I can't upgrade it while there is a plant there, but that should harvest in a second. There we go. Let's see if we get any seeds. In fact, I'm going to uh, increase this and see whether that makes a difference. It does appear to be. Secondary chance, 1%. Oh, so there's a very low... Wait, why is that only 1%? Maybe on the different pieces... It gives it less of a chance. Growing Inferium. While not required for growing Inferium seeds, uh, you can also create Essence Farmland that will increase the growth speed of the seeds. However, certain seeds will require certain farmlands to be planted on. Ah, so maybe the dirt seeds specifically grow better on uh, the Inferium, the one that they are related to. Interesting. If that's the case, can I turn this back? I can. Wonderful. With this dirt essence, let me see if it can be used for making more dirt seeds. Possibly not. Hmm. I'll wait a little bit and see whether or not we, uh, we do get some seeds. It may be that this system does not collect seeds and only the output. If that's the case, we may have to continue to craft up the seeds manually using this stuff until we have enough to fill this area. All right. Let me spend a little bit of time organizing that and seeing if I can get this up and running, and then we'll go from there. Might just have to craft a few seeds manually. And with a little bit of extra time, we now have the whole thing up and running. And it does provide dirt seeds. It is just a low chance. I think it's that secondary chance of 11%. But you can see now that uh, with 20 of these lily pads of fertility around the outside, it starts to produce at a decent pace. Now, this isn't groundbreaking pace or anything like that. It's just uh, enough to continuously supply us with some stuff. Now I've started setting up the next one over here, but we need to uh, make ourselves another ender chest and we probably need to start working out <laughs> a little bit of a, uh, a situation for storing all of this because this is just not gonna stop now. It's gonna keep going and going and that's what I wanna build this room down below here for bulk storage of all of our mystical agriculture stuff. But I think to start off with, we may just need to go into functional storage and make ourselves uh, some drawers. Now, I'm going to do this. Let's make some chests. Uh, 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 I deleted them from here. Okay. Spruce chest. Let's make ourselves some spruce chests. And then we'll make ourselves some spruce one by two drawers. Okay. With these, I should be able to set it up so that 
it picks up the seed and the drop of each crop. So the drop goes in there, we can put the seed underneath, and then I'll have a separate one for fertilized essence that will drop. And most of these will work together, I believe, to create that. So next, what we have to do is set ourselves up with another ender chest. Now, uh, to make that, I have most of the things, I just need one of these, but I don't have any leather. I do in here though, perfect. So, uh, make ourselves up some eyes of ender because we're going to need to make a fair few of these and we'll make ourselves up a bunch of these ender pouches. From there, we have all the materials that we need to make this. So for starters, I'm just going to put this here and we should see that that has access to the exact same thing. Next thing I'm going to do is get myself a storage controller from functional storage. So let's uh, controller, storage controller, put that over here. Just need a redstone comparator. I'm just going to put that there. Uh, hmm. Let's see. Come over this way because I know that I have somewhere in here. Here we go. These two cards for linking. There we go. And the configuration tool. Ah, of course. We're just going to lock these. My basic idea is that we are going to have storage underneath there connected to a couple of different ender chests and if i just go pipes what do i have a universal pipe here with a advanced upgrade 32 items every five ticks should be enough for starters and we'll probably upgrade this as we go so do that it's starting to put items in there nice and slowly but now i can add this and there we go Everything should now be out of here except for our fertilized essence. And you can see when that grows, this is going to continue to go up. Now, this is where, there we go. This is where adding uh, auto crafting to this whole setup will be very handy because we can just make it auto craft this directly into dirt if we so desire. But that is one little section done. Let's get some sleep and try out another. So the next one that I might do well, there's actually a couple of different options. Uh, mystical agriculture. I'm just going to put away a few of these. Also, Batania. I have found a few things to do with this. Okay. But that can be for later. So, if we go over to mystical agriculture, we probably want to go through all of these options and get something set up for all of them, as well as the animal drops. So, it's it's a fair bit of work, honestly. And this will be a long-term project to get all of it set up. But growing stuff like nether quartz is going to allow us to make a bunch of things for our refined storage. Growing gold and iron, I believe, is somewhere here. Iron basically makes an iron farm. Redstone, it's very, very strong. Very, very strong. And we're going to try and get all the way up to some really interesting stuff including unobtainium and wither stars and all of that jazz. So this is cranking away now. Uh, it can hold only 1K in that. So we might see if we have the stuff that's required for making, let's just say a handful of spruce chests and perfect. We'll upgrade that. That can now hold 8,000, which will get us going. I think the next one we're going to do is possibly these inferium seeds so that we start getting up a decent supply of the inferium itself so if i go over to mystical agriculture i actually already have some and you can get these as rewards for different things i actually already have the rabbit seeds as well which is really nice so if we make ourselves one more of these place that on top of there we then want to make up a handful of this stuff and a handful of this stuff let's just craft up a few extra all the modium hose. Nice. Then we just plant this stuff, go in here, set it to five by five, place in a hoe and let it run through its course. And it should all of a sudden, maybe I need to get out and back in. There we go. Pylon is working. And now I can start adding more of these. Now I only have so much of these at the moment, but we're going to start upping the production of them pretty soon. 
you can see that we actually have some extra essence because these are linked up to the same one for the time being. I want to see what we get from this as we go. So we're probably going to get some seeds and bits and pieces quite soon. Now, if I go up top here, I've started growing a few extra cactus, which is good. That means that we can make some more dye like so and turn that into a little bit more of this. We need more slime pearls. Complete. Here's some I prepared earlier. Nice. An additional 19. So if I place this down around the perimeters like so, we should quite quickly start to see this uh, going quite fast. There we go. And harvested. Now this directly harvests Inferium itself. And I don't know whether it creates seeds. Let's try fertilizing some. See whether that increases the chance of it outputting a seed. Nope, doesn't look like it. So for that, we may just be able to have like a single drawer that collects the Inferium itself in sort of a centralized location because that is going to be one of our, uh, our sort of base operations is collecting that and turning that into a bunch of extra stuff. I've now accumulated up back over an hour again. You can tell I've been using this a little bit. We're up to an hour and 45. Let's just speed this up a little to 128. That took away half an hour, but that should make this go a lot faster. Not so much. Ah, because it's limited by how quickly um, this can mine it. Interesting. Bit of a waste. Not too bad. It's a learning experience. So if that's the case, do I need to make myself some more Inferium seeds? Oh, they're actually quite easy to make. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. That's very easy to make. So these just guarantee an output of Inferium at 100%. So that's just going to make that grow a bunch quicker. Cool. Now we have like 150, hello. We have like 150,000 or more of the uh, Inferium itself. Can be attached to a Forge Hammer from Tetra. Nah, I'm all right, thanks. So we, we don't necessarily need this, but at the same time, it's not a bad idea to start building up a supply of it uh, from this. So now that we've got the main idea sorted, uh, I might set up another two. I might set up another one here and another one here, since that is all that we have harvested pylon wise. And then in the next episode, we'll set up a proper storage system before we get into the greater amount of uh, creation. But yeah, this is just going to start ticking away. And keep in mind that uh, eight of those, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, is actually tripled. So each time we get four, we're basically getting 12 dirt. So this is, uh, this is pretty decent. This will build up quite quickly. Okay, that's starting to chug away. Oh, I forgot to turn that into the proper farmland. Is there a way for me to do that while it's there? There's not. Okay. I don't necessarily know whether this improves the uh, speed of it, but because this is a tier one, why did I get so many Inferium seeds? Oh, I craft too many. That's why. Ah, secondary chance goes up by using the proper, proper output. Okay. Let's see whether or not we get an additional seed from in here. In fact, the easiest way to do that is to probably put 43 in there and see if that increases. It does. Okay, cool. So we're getting some extras there. Not necessarily necessary, but we'll take it. So let me uh, sleep for the night, craft up a couple of extra beds. And by beds, I mean like flower beds, crop beds. And we may make ourselves a stone variety and a wood variety just to get the basic building blocks out of the way. Yeah. And with a little bit more time spent, I'm just waiting on some additional stone seeds. These ones seem to produce the uh, stone seeds a little bit slower than anything else. But as you can see, I've set myself up with some something of a design, <laughs> I suppose. Uh, some sort of design for these, these planters that we can duplicate around the outside. Uh, putting some here and another one here and then maybe finding a nice spot in the middle. We'll see how much fits in there. I'm kind of thinking that we try and go all of these ones at least in the first ring. 
which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we've got 4 out of 9. We could go 1, 2, 3, which would go 7. 4 and 4 is 8. <laughs> we'll work something out. It may be that I move the inferior one to another place so that we only have the 8 up here. But with a bit of luck, oh, there we go. We actually got quite lucky. A couple more of these and we're making some basic things using mystical agriculture. Oh, another one. Nice. It's going faster now that I've got more, which is very nice. But you can see I have the lily pads of fertility around the whole thing. And I believe that these have a radius, a similar size to vanilla uh, water spread. So from the center, four blocks in each direction. So a nine by nine. But because they stack, uh, we actually have multiple layers going over top of each other. And you can see how quickly it grows once it decides to. So this is the wood seeds, which provides us with wood essence. And if we have a look at the wood essence, you can put it in different configurations. We also need nature essence for some of it, but in different configurations, it makes different kinds of wood. So we can get mangrove, we can get acacia, jungle, dark oak, uh, birch and spruce and oak and all of that. And I think what we'd be able to do is just set up the crafting recipe as a crafting recipe in an auto crafter. And just whenever we need a particular type of wood, we just ask it to make it. <laughs> That's the idea anyway. So oh, a little bit more. There we go. We just need five more of the stone and I have all of these up and running. We nearly have a thousand of the uh, Inferium here and uh, we're building up a decent supply of the dirt stuff, the dirt essence. Cool. And I put this here, which uh, actually we could grab some of that and try and up our chances of getting some goodies. In fact, let's just spam it and we can pick up the stuff ourselves. Okay, we got five more, perfect. The rain though, not so much. So let's just stand underneath here and have a look up. We have ourselves these little crop beds, which I want to place around these rings. Now there's enough room here to do a fair few, but we're probably going to have to uh, maybe dig into some of these, see whether we can fit some in there as well and uh, make some adjustments. But I can't just be having a couple of uh, drawers out in the open like this. We definitely need to spend the time and set ourselves up with an area below here. Now I do have a mega torch and some stuff lighting up down here. So I'm going to go down a little further and I should be able to put an elevator. Yes, I had one more. With this here, I should be able to go through those things. Nice. And we can start uh, making some space. Let's just... Okay, so we open up a bit of space down here and we will be able to make ourselves a room. Good lord, my reach is ridiculous right now. Let's just carve out the exact circle that I can get from here. Okay, perfect. And my feral lantern has done the uh, work to increase our, uh, our lighting levels down here. Nice. We're sort of connected to some caves, so we are going to have to do some cleaning up if we want to turn this into a proper storage room. But it's not just going to be a storage room. It's going to be everything. I want this centralized point down here to basically be the powerhouse of all of our storage for the entire uh, the entire world, really. Anything storage related is going to get moved down here. So we're going to have things like our refined storage down here. We're going to have a big wall of drawers. I don't think I'm going to keep this circle. I just decided I wanted to do it for now. But we're going to have a big wall of drawers holding a bunch of stuff. And hopefully have everything within a nice enclosed area to do with both storage and possibly even auto crafting. This will be my research area. <laughs> oh, I need to put away some stuff. Luckily, I have a million storage now. So, this area can wait till next time. This area, although it's raining, is now producing a bunch of items which we can use to get uh, resources from. Now, things like the stone, obviously, I don't necessarily need. I'm just doing this for the fun of it because I, <laughs> I have uh, more stone, or at least more cobblestone, than I will ever need. 
right here. And that could be put through my smelter with power and turned into stuff. And I have more dirt than I'll ever need. So maybe uh, let me know in the comments whether you think I should give up on the dirt stuff and the stone stuff, or whether we think that um, maybe they're usable for their other options. They don't just make stone and dirt. They're actually combined in a lot of different ways. So, for example, uh, this can be used for making viridium, blackstone combined with stuff, gravel. Hmm, wow. Ochrum, normal stone with coal, andesite. Okay, yeah, definitely worth keeping this stuff. We can make next to everything out of this. And at the same time, the dirt essence can be used in combination to make gravel. We can make sand, podzel, all sorts of stuff. Very nice. So once we have a proper storage up, we can start putting all of this together a lot more efficiently. Hello, bees. But that's for next episode. So I would like to say, oh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed our first little venture into looking at mystical agriculture. We're going to create ourselves a nice big storage warehouse down here, clean things up in the next episode, which will be fun. A little bit of building and uh, start producing all sorts of goodies. And uh, pretty soon we're going to have to start looking into auto crafting. I'm a little scared, but I'm also excited because once I learn it, a lot of possibilities are opened up for us. So... With that, I would like to thank my Patreon supporters for your continued support, along with a couple of new ones. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for supporting me through this YouTube journey. And to everyone who's been watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy the episode and are looking to mystical agriculture, I'd really appreciate it if you left a like. It does help a lot. Uh, show YouTube that you like what you're watching. And I'm excited to see what we can do with the rest of this stuff. This little setup is really good. Once again, thank you, Princess Lissy. You're amazing. The link to her Twitch is in the description down below. And uh, with that being said, until the next one, I hope you all take care of yourselves and I'll see you then. Bye-bye, everyone. Uh, whoop!